In today's episode of the Everything Crypto Show, we are going to talk about the top three altcoins I am looking at for the month of October. So without further ado, let's hop right into it. And before we reveal spot number three, just a friendly reminder that I am not a financial advisor. I do not offer financial advice on YouTube. I am simply here for your crypto entertainment purposes. And if I am successful in entertaining you even just a little bit with my videos, please consider hitting that sub and like button as it does mean a lot and it shows me that you are enjoying the content so without further ado spot number three is going to none other than bnb coin now if we're talking about whether i am looking for a potential long or short on bnb i would be looking for the short position effectively meaning that i do think bnb has some downside risk over the next month and to kind of give you some context behind the importance of the BNB token, if we just take a look at the at the total crypto market cap here, sitting at just over 1.08 trillion, BNB makes up 32 billion of that. It is currently the fourth largest altcoin by market cap. And if you were to exclude Tether, that would actually make it the third largest cryptocurrency by market cap, only behind both Bitcoin and Ethereum. So technically, it is the number one altcoin here on the market market as I don't consider Ether to be an altcoin anymore. I think it has solidified itself as a blue chip. However, BNB does appear like it may be in some trouble in the near future if we do see a breakdown below the $200 level. And that's what I'm going to talk about a little bit in this video. So for starters, I don't think that Binance themselves needs any introduction. This is the world's largest cryptocurrency exchange with over 150 million plus users. However, we do know that Binance has actually fallen in some trouble here recently versus the SEC, the CFTC, and honestly, things are not looking super hot for this crypto firm at the moment. And even if nothing was to happen to Binance, just the amount of FUD happening right now in the market, if people believe that Binance is going to go under or if they are going to be removed from the states, that news itself would be enough to create some selling pressure on the BNB token as we have seen it previously it's worth noting that binance is a huge monopoly over centralized exchanges at the moment with 58 billion basically in assets under management and uh the second place here is okx with 9.6 billion in assets under management so even a massive advantage over second place of about you know 50 billion more or less and then the Binance Smart Chain here, this is the third largest blockchain in terms of TVL behind Ethereum and Tron, meaning that BNB token is very important on both the centralized side of things as well as the decentralized side of things. So with all that said, if BNB is so important to the market, why am I looking at a potential short? And the reason here is basically because BNB is coming up on a very, very important area of support that uh, if we break below it, I do think there is going to be some downside problems ahead. So taking a look at the BNB coin on a log scale, we can see a massive gap here that has never been filled on this token between about $45 and $185. $45 dollars kind of being that last price we saw in february of 2021 before this coin ripped all the way up to about 700 dollars and then we did come back down to 185 here last june in an attempt to fill this gap however we never fully filled this gap and if we actually take a look at the bnb chart now on a log scale you're going to notice basically just a series of lower highs here that does look to me like binance or rather the bnb token does kind of want to make its way back to the downside now what i am looking for specifically is a breakdown below the 185 level which is that prior june low and if we do see the breakdown at that level that is where i would be a little bit more cautious here of a gap fill happening and the one thing about gap fills is you know they don't always have to happen but based on prior history when gap fills do happen i mean they do tend to happen over longer periods of time and at the moment we can see that bnb had a massive run up here with no revisitation of any of these lower levels now it's also worth noting if we actually look at bnb versus bitcoin okay so not only can comparing it to the US dollar, but also versus its Bitcoin valuation. It has shown a lot of weakness recently after being one of the strongest altcoins throughout the bear market. And this does lead me to believe that BNB could see some more continued weakness, not only versus its USD pair, but also 
versus its Bitcoin pair. So now I do want to hop into coin at number two on today's list, and that is none other than Quant. And we've spoken about Quant multiple times on the channel. You guys know this is one of my favorite altcoins here. And actually, if you go back to our videos in the prior month, we were talking about a potential bounce at the $85 level, which I said I thought was a very strong area of support. And if we take a look here, it actually came exactly down to $85 today. It came down to $85.07, okay? And we did say that $85 would be a very strong area of support for Quant. As we can see, Quant hit $85 back in September of 2022 before rallying all the way up to about $228. It also actually bounced off of $85 here and then ran up to that all-time high of about $428. So $85 previously has been a pretty strong area of price action, and this was a potential buying zone that I did say to look out for. However, that does not mean that quant cannot go lower, okay? In fact, I want to kind of talk about why this sell-off has been happening, and I do think I'm going to dedicate my own video to this. If you would want to see that, let me know in the comments down below. But there has been a ton of FUD on Twitter lately about the quant team selling their quant, dumping their bed on the community and I'm sorry to tell you guys but if you own any of these altcoins odds are that they are also selling and dumping on their community no different than XRP unlocking from the escrow no different than link doing the token unlocks and dumping it on the market no different than AVAX doing token unlocks optimism a ton of these altcoins do unlocks for founders to basically sell their tokens and raise some money so should this concern you well, I think the first thing that's important to remember or to kind of consider is why is this team selling tokens, okay? Selling tokens to continue operating is a common practice here in crypto. Definitely not something that I am a fan of personally, but in order to sustain operations, it could mean a short-term impact on the price action for long-term gain for the quant company themselves. And the quant company has been doing very well here, okay, with their quant overledger technology. This is their patent pending technology that does allow for the tokenization of traditional assets, as well as a bridge to move these assets across different blockchains that are supported supported by this DLT. And this distributed ledger technology is powered by none other than the quant token itself, meaning that adoption of the quant overledger does equal more adoption for the QNT token. And the quant overledger here has definitely seen some adoption and attention from big big names out here as com as a as stated, sorry, by Gilbert Verdium, the CEO of the quant network. So when I kind of look at a project, am I more inclined to look at the FUD on Twitter that is unwarranted and unproven? Or am I going to look at what is actually happening here from the words of the CEO and from major banks around the world? Uh, the option is probably the latter that I'm going to pay more attention to. So Gilbert Verdian says here, and this was also confirmed by the BIS and the Bank of England, that they work together on Project Rosalind, a project designing and implementing a CBDC API and platform and testing use cases for CBDCs with financial services participants. And this also included the Bank of Canada, Barclays, MasterCard, and Amazon, all of whom built and tested new CBDC payment flows on the platform. So, I mean, a project working with the BIS, the Bank of England, the Bank of Canada, Barclays, MasterCard, and Amazon is definitely not a project that I would be betting against, and especially not uh, not giving any sort of weight to these opinions that we see on Twitter from people who are just simply trying to spread FUD. So this sell-off here, in my opinion, has made for a very interesting uh, buying opportunity, and that is exactly why Quant does come in at number two on this list. I actually uh, was supposed to post a video yesterday, but after taking a look at the Quant price action, I did decide to delay it a day and actually include this here, because as I stated previously, we did come back down to that important area of support at $85. So definitely keeping an eye on Quant here, and that is why it comes in at spot number two for this month. Now, coming in at spot number one, we have Optimism. This is a layer two scaling solution for Ethereum, and there is a reason that I do have this project on my radar this month, despite not really talking about it a lot on the channel. 
So Optimism is a fast, stable, and scalable Ethereum L2 solution, basically built by ETH developers for ETH developers as a minimal extension to existing Ethereum software. And basically, the Optimism mainnet allows EVM equivalent architecture to scale Ethereum apps without the cost and transaction fees and the time associated with building on ETH. Effectively, any of your apps working on Ethereum will also work on the OP mainnet at a fraction of a cost and much faster. Optimism has already saved over $3 billion worth of gas fees with $2 billion on chain and over 141 million transactions occurring on the OP mainnet. Now, recently they did actually announce their super chain project, which basically seeks to maximize interoperability between different chains using the OP stack. The OP stack is the modular code powering the Optimism mainnet and super chain. And this super chain allows for all of the different stacks and different chains built on the stack to communicate with each other, effectively meaning that any of these projects built on the Optimism stack are interoperable with each other. And OP stack has definitely gained a lot of traction. I think the biggest example of a chain launching on Optimism recently has been Base. Base is another Ethereum layer 2 that is built on the Optimism stack powered by Coinbase, making it one of the most secure, secure and scalable EVM layer 2s out there. And via Coinbase here, they also say that the OP stack is open source public good that will serve as the foundation for a super chain of layer twos that share interoperability, sequencing, and governance. Now, what I think is important to know when it comes to Optimism is that at the moment, this is actually just one spot ahead of Arbitrum, the leading layer two solution for Ethereum at the moment. But I am currently a bigger fan of the tokenomics that OP does actually provide with an 880 million float. Now, they have a max supply of 4.2 billion, which means that only about 20% has been unlocked and 80% is left to be dumped on current holders in the coming years but this is not a long-term thesis for us this is a short-term trade so at the moment trading with 880 million tokens circulating and a market cap of just under one point or just over 1.1 billion is is a good check mark for me in my opinion and as we can see here, taking a look at Optimism, it currently sits in 10th place across all blockchains in terms of TVL, a base sitting in 11th place, which is built on Optimism. However, this trade here is really not, uh, it's not a super fundamental one. It's actually more of a technical trade, if we're being completely honest. And uh, to show you exactly what I'm looking for when it comes to Optimism, I do want to take you guys on to the daily time frame here. And basically just show you that ever since Optimism did actually launch on its airdrop, had that initial dip, that it has been respecting this uptrending channel pretty cleanly, right? So we can actually see here, I think the weekly does a better job of showcasing this, but we can see here that Optimism has been doing a pretty good job of really just respecting the channel that it has been trading in here. And at the moment, it has actually been making a set of lower highs. While it is sitting near a very important area of support at about a buck 25 per token. Now, if Optimism was to break down here and actually break this uptrend, I do think that could lead to a retest of the 90 cent range. However, if Optimism was actually to break out of this downtrending channel and continue respecting that uptrend, that would definitely be a very good look for this token, in my opinion. And as far as the charts are concerned at the moment, Yes, Optimism has in fact been making a set of higher highs over a long period of time, leading into a bull market where I think that uh, Ethereum Layer 2s will be a pretty big uh, a pretty big narrative in my opinion, actually just scaling Layer uh, Ethereum with existing Layer 2s, and that is why Optimism is currently number one on my list. It is a combination of the kind of like the, the hype and the fundamentals around this project, as well as the technicals that do have me keeping it an eye on the project this month so really just looking for a bounce off of that long term uptrend here as well as that solid area of support sitting at about a buck 23 so on that note i hope you did enjoy the content in today's video you know what to do if you made it all the way to the end you are an absolute champion let me know in the youtube comments down below and claim that champion status i am wishing you all an amazing thursday an amazing weekend ahead and i hope to catch you in the next one
Peace out for now.